but they all serve a purpose and they all fit within my style. And so I also wanna mention, which we've mentioned before, you can only do what the dog will allow you to do, so don't go crazy with your props. Like for example, there is a, an image I'll show you right now of this adorable golden retriever on a tricycle. And yes, that dog sat there and looked at me and was adorable, but most dogs won't do this. And if he had any issue whatsoever, I would not have made him do that. So you can only do what they'll allow you to do and don't force anything. Also, don't be afraid to evolve your style as needed. I've done this um, and my style used to be all those antique vintage props and it's definitely transitioned more to um, kind of more minimalistic, more about the dog, not so much about the prop. Um, so don't be afraid to do that. And I found that my clients have really enjoyed the new transition, um, but it also will kind of change the type of props that you do get for your studio. But props are really great to add interest to your images as well. So for example, if you have a really small dog, you can give that puppy a sense of scale with the props. So for example, this uh, adorable little multi poo on this ginormous scale, you know, it gives a sense of scale of how small this dog is, or this adorable little toy poodle in uh, a handbag, which is actually a very small handbag. Um, but you can tell a story while giving a sense of scale. So for example, this toy poodle's mom was a personal stylist, hence the handbag. So you can really add a story or a sense of scale with your props. 